Welcome back and to our continued coverage of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Just yesterday, Russia announced it had ordered troops to withdraw from Kherson. Today, it says forces are conducting maneuvers to prepare positions on the left bank of the Dnipro River in strict accordance with an approved plan as Ukrainian troops advanced in southern Ukraine. Moscow had ordered one of the biggest retreats of what it calls its special military operation in Ukraine just yesterday, though Kyiv has remained publicly wary, warning the fleeing Russians could turn Kherson into a city of death. Ukraine's army chief, Valery Zelushny, said Kyiv could not yet confirm whether Russia was indeed pulling out, but that, the, but that Ukrainian troops had advanced seven kilometers in the past 24 hours and recaptured 12 settlements. Moscow ordered its troops on Wednesday to withdraw from the entire Russian-held pockets on the west bank of the Dnipro River, including Kherson, the only regional capital Russia had captured in nine months of the conflict. President Joe Biden has been reading meaning to the withdrawal of Russian troops from not just from Kherson to the West Bank of the Dnipro River, saying it shows Moscow is having real problems with his military. Speaking to reporters earlier, President Biden said it's interesting that Russia had waited until after the U.S. congressional election to announce the withdrawal. According to him, the withdrawal would allow both sides to recalibrate their positions over the winter. But it remains to be seen whether Ukraine is prepared to compromise with Russia. President Biden says he hopes Democrats and Republicans can continue the bipartisan approach of confronting Russia's aggression in Ukraine after Tuesday's midterm elections. The American people have made clear, I think, that they expect Republicans to be prepared to work with me as well. In the area of foreign policy, I hope we'll continue this bipartisan approach of confronting Russia's aggression in Ukraine. When I return from the G20 meetings in Indonesia with other world leaders, I'm going to invite the leaders of both political parties, as I've done in the past in my foreign trips, to the White House to discuss how we can work together for the remainder of this year and into the next Congress. We've not given Ukraine a blank check. There's a lot of things that Ukraine wants we didn't, we didn't do. For example, I was asked very much whether we prefer, we provide American aircraft to guarantee the skies over Ukraine. I said, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to get into a third world war taking on the Russian aircraft and directly engage. But would we provide them with the, all the the rational ability to defend themselves. Yes, and there's so much at stake. So I, 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 I would be surprised if, if Leader McCarthy even has a majority of his Republican colleagues who say they're not going to fund the legitimate defensive needs of Ukraine. Well, we're going to take a look. There it is. Uh, at the footage released yeah, online today showing Ukrainian soldiers near a highway 30 kilometers northwest from Russian-controlled Kherson, a soldier in the video held a Ukrainian flag and said the 28th Separate Mechanized Brigade broke the first Russian line of defense and is advancing towards Kherson. Ukrainian Army Chief Valery Zalushny says Ukrainian forces have advanced seven kilometers into two directions in the south and captured 12 new settlements. He asked that Ukrainian forces have advanced in the direction from uh, Pervomesk towards Kherson and from Petropavlika towards Novoryask, roughly parallel with the Dnipro River. <laughs> And we know the news. Ukraine's foreign minister, Dmitry Kuliba, has signed a treaty on the sidelines of the Southeast Asian summit as Kyiv seeks to strengthen ties with the regional bloc, which had joined international condemnation of Russia's invasion. Ukraine becomes the 50th country to sign the instrument of accession to the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation in Southeast Asia. TAC is a peace treaty established in 1976 on cooperation, peace, non-interference, on affairs and solving problems by peaceful means. Cambodia is hosting the ASEAN Leaders Summit and also the East Asia Summit over the next few days in Phnom Penh, with some meetings due to include Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, as well as being attended by U.S. President Joe Biden. Cambodia has been more outspoken than most of the members of the 10-member ASEAN bloc over Russia's invasion of Ukraine.
Meanwhile, NATO is warning against a growing cyber threat in the ongoing war in Ukraine, highlighting recent cyber attacks against satellites, critical infrastructure and government departments. Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg warned of the growing threat from cyberspace. He says NATO is determined to step to guard against cyber attacks that would support Ukraine for as long as it takes. This year, uh, Euro-Atlantic security has been rocked by President Putin's war against democratic sovereign Ukraine. Just yesterday, I met with uh, Ukrainian troops uh, being trained in the United Kingdom. Brave young uh, Ukrainians who have volunteered uh, to defend their own country. Ukraine has uh, driven back Russia's invasion through the tenacity of its people and the support of NATO allies. We will keep supporting Ukraine for as long as it takes. Cyber is constantly a contested space and the line between peace, crisis and conflict is blurred. That is why NATO has taken the threat uh, to cyberspace from state and non-state actors so seriously for so long and why we have taken determined steps to guard against cyber attacks. It is key to our collective defense. The International Atomic Energy Agency needs to play an essential role in verifying North Korea's nuclear program. That's according to South Korea's representative to the UN during an, a United Nations plenary on the IAEA report. Australia's UN representative Heather McIntyre supported South Korea's remarks, saying the DPRK's nuclear and ballistic missile tests are a great challenge for the international community. A further grave challenge for the international community this year has been the Democratic People's Republic of Korea's ongoing development of its illegal and destabilizing nuclear and ballistic missile programs. Australia condemns these actions and urges the DPRK not to resume nuclear testing, an escalatory step that would seriously undermine regional peace and security. We note with grave concern that Iran's actions prevent the agency from providing assurances that Iran's nuclear program is exclusively peaceful. We support the joint comprehensive plan of action and call on Iran to reverse the steps it has taken away from its nuclear commitments under the plan. Mr. Vice President, IA safety guards lie at the heart of the global nuclear non-proliferation regime. We support IAEA efforts to universalize and comprehensive safeguards agreements, the additional protocol, and the revised small quantities control. We commend the IAEA's efforts to maintain and enhance its readiness to play an essential role in verifying the DPRK's nuclear program when a political agreement is reached. With these remarks, we affirm our strong, strong support for the work of the agency, as well as the draft resolution A-77L9 report of the International Atomic Energy Agency. Now, around 100,000 Russian and 100,000 Ukrainian soldiers have been killed or injured in the war in Ukraine. That's coming from the most senior U.S. General Mark Miley, his chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, who also suggests that around 40,000 civilians have died after being caught up in the conflict. The estimates are the highest offered yet by a Western official. He also said the signs that Kyiv is willing to re-enter talks with Moscow offered a and offered an A for negotiations. And in recent days, Ukraine has signaled a willingness to hold some discussions with Moscow after President Volodymyr Zelensky dropped a demand that his opposite number, that's Vladimir Putin, must be removed from power before negotiations can resume. General Miley says for any talks to be successful, both Russia and Ukraine have to reach a mutual rec recognition that a wartime victory is maybe not achievable through military means and therefore they need to turn to other means. The VOA's Anna Chernikova joins me now. She's in Kyiv. Anna, great to see you after really a long while. Has there been any confirmation though 
about the Ukrainian military, you know, concerning the withdrawal of Russian troops from Kherson uh, to the west bank of the Dnieper River. Russia says its troops are moving, but can the Ukrainian military confirm that? Good evening. Um, well, for the moment, uh, what we have heard from the Ukrainian officials is that, first of all, uh, for the past day, uh, Ukrainian forces liberated uh, at least six new settlements in the Kherson region on the right bank of, of the river of Dnipro. So uh, Ukrainian forces continue its counteroffensive and its advance. Uh, Ukrainian general staff uh, also confirmed that uh, Ukrainian counteroffensive is ongoing as planned, uh, according to the uh, to, to the plans that Ukrainian forces had from the very beginning. Uh, we hear uh, information mostly from the international uh, partners and international intelligences that actually the rough signs of Russian forces withdrawal and Ukrainian forces um, and Ukrainian officials, uh, uh, with, uh, they basically, they do not confirm or saying that this is not happening. They say that uh, very important to understand that uh, they do not believe that Russian Federation would just leave. They definitely would create additional um, risk for both civilian society and for Ukrainian soldiers. So it's not going to be a very you know, easy trip to Kherson. Uh, Russian forces would uh, fight uh, back, at least. Uh, this is what we can also hear from U.S. Uh, representatives that actually uh, it looks like that Russian forces would uh, fight back in order to uh, move from that territory with most of equipment and manpower. So. This is not something about easy uh, going um, way to to the main city of Kherson. Uh, Ukrainians uh, highlight as well that it is important to remember that uh, Russian forces could create different provocations. For example, uh, Ukrainians are really concerned about the Kahovka Dam because this is something that uh, in case uh, there are damages or explosions in there, this could, could cause a really huge cat catastrophe for the region, and not only for Ukraine, actually, because this would um, this would impact uh, very uh, the waters of uh, other countries as well. Uh, so, for the moment, we do hear that Russian forces are withdrawing. Uh, however. Uh, Ukrainians confirmed that there are still uh, at least 20,000 of Russian uh, manpower in the area. And um, uh, for the moment, it's not definitely Ukrainian flag in the city of Kherson. So President Zelensky mentioned that uh, we can talk about liberation of Kherson or we can talk about successful counteroffensive when Ukrainian flag would actually be in the city of Kherson. For the moment, we see Ukrainian flags appearing in the settlements around uh, in that area. So uh, we will have, uh, I guess, to wait for a couple more days until the situation would be more or less uh, clear. And this is also actually what British intelligence said, that uh, Russian forces would need at least a couple of days to withdraw completely. But can the Ukrainian military also confirm that, you know, Russian, the Russian army in Ukraine is recording more losses, like the U.S. president uh, alludes? Uh, Ukrainian official data is that Russian forces lost almost 80,000 personnel, uh, 79 or so. Uh, like almost almost 80. Uh, in terms of Ukrainian losses, uh, there there is no official data, military losses at least. Uh, there is no official da final data. However, what uh, what officials are saying that there are uh, there are less uh, because basically um, as they, as they explain this, uh, the defend uh, those who defend they have less losses. But again. Um, well, we don't really, we cannot really clarify this information. Uh, information about uh, Russian losses looks more or less similar to what international also uh, partners say. 
But in terms of Ukrainian losses, we don't have this confirmed information. In terms of civilians, as also we heard about 40,000 uh, from, from the U.S. representatives. Uh, well, uh, unfortunately, this number could be more because as Ukrainian authorities were reporting that uh, in the city of Mariupol itself, only in Mar Mariupol, it could be uh, this number. So. Uh, again, this is something that is, for the moment, very difficult to clarify. Indeed. And Prime Minister uh, Kuliba, Kuli, Dimitro Kuliba is signing a treaty on the sidelines of the ASEAN summit that's currently holding in Cambodia. Uh, that Treaty of Amity and Cooperation in Southeast Asia is on cooperation, peace, non-interference in affairs, solving problems by peaceful means. How much of a support really have these ASEAN countries given to Ukraine? And uh, seeing that, you know, many of them still stand very much staunchly by Russia. Uh, well, I guess this is why exactly why Ukrainian officials start this process of, uh, and, and there is a tour uh, of Metrokolab around countries. Um, it, it is important for Ukraine, and this was uh, this was expressed by President Zelensky and also by uh, by a couple of other officials uh, who have this uh, uh, who, who work in the international affairs area that, and by Mr. Kolaba himself that. It is very important to um, create uh, right um, negotiations and uh, uh, right cooperation with these countries. Uh, and for the moment, uh, Ukraine didn't really uh, have, uh, you know, that uh, perfectly structured uh, relations, at least with all, all of those countries, maybe with some. But uh, definitely this is something to be improved. And this is exactly what uh, is uh, what this meeting and what this uh, signing uh, by Mr. Kuleba, I guess, uh, means. So uh, definitely Ukraine is looking for additional partners uh, and uh, looking for uh, additional countries to uh, either change their perception of the R russia ukraine war and relations in general, uh, but also just to create its own uh, cooperation and relations basically in the way that Ukraine would uh, would basically need for the next years because of course we all understand that um, Ukraine has a very big impact uh, in terms of grain uh, experts and so on and so forth and I guess that uh, there could be more cooperation and uh, this would be great for both sides. So uh, Ukrainian government uh, take this opportunity and this chance uh, in this time to actually start this process and start this, uh, you know, improvement of the relations and improvement of the, uh, of the dialogue, I should say. Anna, thanks again uh, for looking out for us and giving us the updates. Do stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.